Good day to everybody. My name is Emmanuel Jamin. I am the course tutor for this uh, training program. This is the training program for uh, young African negotiators of the climate change process. And uh, its uh, objective uh, is to uh, basically develop an online uh, training on climate change for negotiators of young African negotiators. And we will be focusing mainly on two themes. The first theme will be structures of the conference of the parties, uh, bearing in mind that there are now three treaties that are now uh, being undertaken in the meetings. There's the conference of the parties, there's the conference of the parties meeting as the parties of the Kyoto Protocol, and there's a conference of the parties meeting as parties of the Paris Agreement. The second theme will be on national delegation and the participation in the negotiations. So basically, uh, this course is trying to teach the young African negotiators on how best can they be more productive when they attend the, 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 the climate change uh, negotiations. And what is it that they will need to know uh, as they are uh, attending the, the climate change negotiation. Uh, out of this course, we will expect that participants should be able to define what is climate system, uh, which includes the climate, the greenhouse gas, uh, global warming, the effects of climate change. These are the basics for any person who would like to attend the negotiations for that person to understand so that you can have an understanding as to what is the problem? Why are so many governments meeting together to discuss, uh, the, to find a solution to the climate problem? Uh, we will then explain, so briefly, the history. The participants should be able to understand where are we coming from with these issues? And then how is these issues framed? in the taxes of the convention, the Kyoto Protocol, and the Paris Agreement. We see from this that uh, the text, the way it's structured, it's such that it's got sections. There's the preamble sections, the principles, and the areas or the elements that are negotiated mainly. And then the rest is more like a, a how to review the convention, how to settle dispute, how to uh, leave uh, the treat. Those elements are not necessarily being negotiated. We will then move on to look at how these treaties have been advancing the implement, their implementation. So it's basically uh, trying to give an overview or an insight of what has been going on with these uh, uh, treaties. What is it that they are trying to implement? What is it that they are negotiating? And then at this particular era, we structure the whole thing in terms of uh, the key elements, which is adaptation and mitigation. Now we've also got loss and damage as well in. And then we look into the means of implementation, which is basically finance, technology, and capacity building. There's also research and systematic observation. There's also uh, action action for climate empowerment, which is basically uh, considering education on climate issues, uh, public uh, outreach, public information, and international issues. The next area that the participant will be able to understand after the course is the, the sequence of these climate conferences. That is the trajectory from the first climate conferences what happened. And as we go on, we will realize that from the first climate conferences, it was, there were no uh, commitment that were laid down. But as we move on, it was realized that no, the convention doesn't have commitment. Then we went to the legally binding commitment of the Kyoto Protocol for the industrialized countries. But again, it, it came up to the participant that no, it's not enough to have a legally binding commitment for only developing countries. And then they decided to 
negotiate another framework, uh, which led to the Paris Agreement. And in the Paris Agreement, it is applicable to all countries. And it's now got basically three objectives, which is the, the temperature goal, the adaptation goal, and the financial flows, uh, which is another goal. This will lead us also to the, uh, now the annual conferences as to what were the basically in summer, the outcomes. You know, these conferences are very big. We may not be able to summarize everything, but the decisions that were taken, the key ones that uh, actually influencing the implementation, we will look into them uh, in, in, in that sequence. The next element that participants for this course will be able to understand is the importance of national delegation. In this process, in these conferences, there are so many things that go on. There are bilaterals when the delegation should go to, there are negotiations, there are uh, other elements that you do as an, a delegation, and they are also coalition. There are established groups uh, which you have to go into, there are bilaterals which you have to undertake in moving forward several decisions or coming towards a, a sort of form of a consensus on a, a particular agenda item. Now, it is important for the uh, national delegates to understand this kind of groupings because they normally take the whole day. They start in the morning and they will take the whole day. And you, it's important to know which are the coalitions or group that you might uh, belong to. And in addition to that, when you're participating in the negotiation, there are various platforms. There is the plenary where all the decisions are taken and you must attend the plenary. And there are conduct groups which are established by the plenary. And there are also other uh, negotiating forums like informal groups, uh, friends of the chair, in Davos. Those are not established by the plenary. And most of the time, when you are in a conduct group, or the informal informals, the only language that is used is English. So it's important to have some bit of understanding of English if you are going to participate in the conduct group. Actually, it's important that you participate in the conduct group because these are the groups that actually negotiate the decision. And then uh, finally, uh, we are going to look at COP26, the incoming COP uh, in Glasgow. For this COP, we are going to look at what is it that it's trying is going to achieve at the COP. You know, we already know that this COP is talking about nature-based solutions. It's talking about energy reduction. But at the same time, apart from those things that the COP is calling upon, there are issues that are still outstanding, especially with the Paris Agreement. We have Article 6, which is the marketing mechanisms. Uh, which is still pending. And there are various issues which are still very difficult to solve in market mechanism. Things like uh, corresponding adjustment, uh, things like uh, avoidance of double counting. These issues are also uh, important and they need a lot of time. There are other issues that were not completed like uh, common timeframes uh, for the national development the determined contributions, which is now used in the Paris Agreement for countries to bring forward their domestic policies and how best they will reduce emissions and increase uh, things, which basically absorbs uh, uh, the, the, the greenhouse gases, as well as making sure that they build resilient nations uh, and the uh, carbon development is through the low pet uh, pathways and including uh, financial support to developing countries so that they can also implement or take a uh, climate action. This is basically the core structure. Uh, I mean, the, the, the expected output of the course. We also uh, uh, have sort of developed the core structure. The course is going to be in three parts. There will be, the first part will be on module one and two, 
basically module one and two is talking about the climate system and uh, the second one is talking about the overview which is the overview of the treaties uh, as to how were they developed including the history that will be the first course uh, the second uh, part of the course will involve uh, now the actual implementation which will be module three what is it that is implemented? What is it that is negotiated to implement? Uh, here we talk about the progress, tracking progress. We talk about transparency. We talk about research. We talk about the roles of the non-state actors. This is the group that normally is not involved in the negotiation, like the business group, the NGOs, the civil society. But it has been seen that it is important that they also come into the play if we are going to increase ambitions to reduce emissions and as well as adapt to the impacts of climate change. Then the module four, which is for the second part, talks about how this convention has been progressing. So in simple terms, the trajectory of the UN process starting from convention one up to convention 26 which is the Glasgow. we are going to will you that that chapter that module gives basically uh, the outcomes uh, of each uh, particular conference not in details but to give the view and we also uh, highlight those uh, conferences which were viewed as major conferences uh, because they were expected to take uh, decisions in that will help the, 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 the governments implement the convention. Such decisions as the Kyoto Protocol, the Copenhagen uh, COP, where uh, it was expected that uh, uh, a decision will be taken for the second commitment period, as well as the Paris Agreement. These are the conferences, the climate change conferences, which are probably could be said that they have been the major conferences. And then as we move on, we will go to the last part, the third part of the training. The third part of the training uh, involves the national delegation. This is where you have to understand that as a national delegation, what is it that you're expected to do apart from the negotiations? You are involved in the negotiation. But you also have to work within the groups. You have to uh, conduct bilateral. You have to take informal consultations. You have to also attend conduct groups, as well as attending the plenary, uh, the meetings of the subsidiary bodies, uh, which for which the plenary is for the corps and uh, the subsidiary bodies too. But those meetings have, are always having the sixth language of the UN. Unfortunately, the bilaterals, the informal consultations, they are all conducted in English. And then finally, it will be uh, the, the road to the COP26, where we're giving the overview of the COP26. Uh, how is the implementation of the prescreen being advanced? Uh, we're also going to give a brief overview of the African position the African group of nations position in this particular call. Now, for each stage, like I said, the stage one, stage two, stage three, for each stage, there will be questions. So for each module will have 20 questions. So it means for stage one, which has got two module, module one and two, there are 40 questions. Participants are expected to attempt all the questions before they can move to the next stage, which is module three and four. And, then, and after attempting module three and four, they will have to also take the 40 questions and then move to module five and six. The way the course is structured is such that the first week you will be only doing module one and two, which is the first stage. And then the second week, it will be module three and four. And then the third week, it will be module five and six. So the course 
is for a period of roughly three weeks, which is basically five uh, working days, which is Monday to Friday. Uh, during that time, myself as a course tutor, I will be available, but only uh, on emails and probably a WhatsApp uh, where there are needs for further clarification. So during the entire course, I'll be available. Now, at the end of the course, participants will take an exam. Now, this is an exam for participation. And after you've taken the exam, uh, we're not really going to be assessing you for a pass, but we were trying to assess your understanding of the training. And once you have written the exams and submitted it, uh, it will be marked and then you will be given a, an attendance certificate. The marking uh, does not affect you. The marking is for, the, uh, for myself to see if there was any understanding in the course. And then after the exams, participants will be expected to uh, fill up a survey. Now, this survey is mainly for you to tell the tutor if the course was suitable, if the course uh, was good, what can be done in the course? Does this course need to be done again? Was I good? Or what is it that you would like me to improve as I give you the course? So basically, this is how the course is structured. And when you are registering the course, there will be a question where you will be feeling, basically, this is more like trying to get your biography. Uh, which is your name, your title, you working, your sex, uh, how do you get to know this course? Uh, you know, are you a negotiator? Are you an academician? Because this course is suitable for anybody who is new to this process. This process, they are very difficult to understand the climate change process. It might take you years before you understand as to what's going on. For instance, there are a lot of economies using climate change. They will tell you CBDR, you know, and they, they don't really take care. They will tell you decision one, CP20. Now, these are the things that it will take you time to understand. And from this course, you should be able to read a decision quickly and understand what is this decision is all about. So I thank you very much for listening and I wish all the participants good luck. I hope uh, this course will be very much useful to your training and understanding. And I hope that you will find it very much beneficial for you as you continue uh, being a climate change negotiator. Thank you very much.